Yeah, hello everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm talking about exactly one semantics in Kafka. Um, this work was mainly carried out by my colleagues, Jason Apurva, Goshang, and, and Thuram. And how I'm going to structure this talk. So first I'm going to talk about what is Kafka providing today. And then I'm going to Kafka what's new, what we actually mean by exactly one semantics. Um, because the term is a little bit overloaded and everybody has a different definition, I guess. And then I will explain how you can actually use it. Uh, so that should be the most interesting part for most developers here. And then I will just quickly wrap up. So today, Apache Kafka offers at least once in-order delivery per petition. Uh, that basically means if you have a, have a Kafka consumer that is subscribing to some topic and an error occurs, uh, and the, producer rec the consumer recovers, it might read some messages multiple times. On the other hand, if you, if you write to a, co uh, to a topic um, and there is something that goes wrong, then a producer might retry, and this could result in duplicate writes. Uh, so why do you want to care? Well, if you have your, your Apache Kafka application and you want to read and write from Kafka, so you read your input from Kafka and you want to write your result to Kafka, right now exactly once is not possible. Even if Apache Kafka uh, gives you exactly one semantics, because of this producer retries, it could still be the case um, that you get duplicate writes in your output, and that is what we want to fix here. Um, so first I want to walk to a quick example why, how those duplicates actually can occur. So we have a, we have a producer on the left-hand side, we have a Kafka broker, and we have a topic petition where we want to write some data. So first, the producer sends a record to the broker. That's a basically a key-value pair. Uh, and the broker appends it to the log. Uh, and in order to, to acknowledge this log, the broker sends an acknowledgment back to the producer and tells the producer, I have written this record. And exactly this acknowledgment could, uh, could go wrong. For example, if the network is lossy, or the broker goes down before it even sends the acknowledgment, or there are different other kinds of scenarios. In this case, the producer never receives the acknowledgement, and the producer assumes, well, this record was never written. So what the producer does, well, it sends the same record again. The problem is that the broker doesn't know that it's a retry. To the broker, it looks like a new write. So the broker, broker happily appends this record a second time, uh, and then sends successfully the acknowledgement back. And now we end up with this duplicate that we never want to have. Um, so why do we need to improve this? Well, uh, stream processing is becoming a bigger part uh, in the data processing length, length, landscape. Um, mission, criti uh, mission criti critical applications uh, are, are built in many companies across all kinds of industries, and so this demand for exactly once uh, is, is growing. And because Apache Kafka is the de facto standard for, for data stream processing, uh, it's super important for, for Kafka to have these stronger guarantees. Uh, it's also super important to expand the universe of streaming applications. For example, if you think about finance applications, those duplicate writes or reads are really not acceptable. Uh, so with this new semantics, Kafka also uh, broadens the range of what you can actually do with the system. So what's new? Um, well, this new exactly one semantics are basically uh, a three-tier thing, if you wish. So on the first hand, uh, Apache Kafka adds an item potent producer uh, that's basically uh, used to guarantee exactly one's rights. So the problem I just described before is avoided. Then there is a completely new feature that's called a transactional producer. Uh, and that basically means you have atomic rights across multiple petitions. What that means I will show in a, in a quick uh, example later on. Uh, and then for stream processing, you have this read process write pattern that also Spark would use on top of Kafka. And for this, you really get this exactly one semantics now that you process each record exactly once and don't get any duplicates in, in your output. So first I want to go with the item potent producer. How does it actually work? Um, again, we have the example from before. We have a producer, we have a broker, and we have the topic petition we want to write to. And now if we have the item potent producer, if the producer writes something, well, it sends the key value pair as before, but it also sends some more metadata. 
In this case, we have a so-called sequence number, so it is zero, and we have a producer ID, uh, 73 in this example. So the sequence number more or less identifies the record itself, where in the topic partition it should go, uh, and the PID identifies the producer, so that the broker can distinguish between different producers. If now the broker writes this data to the topic partition, it not only writes the data itself, but it also writes this metadata. Now, if this acknowledgement is lost and the producer retries, it sends the same stuff again with the same metadata attached. And now the broker can actually identify that that's a retry because the write comes from the same producer and it uses the same sequence number. So the broker sees, oh, I have appended this record already to the log, and so the broker just sends an acknowledgement back without doing anything uh, because it knows it's a duplicate. Now, the next feature, uh, multi, atomic multi-partition writes. Um, we also call them transactions. It's not the same thing as a database transaction. We use just the same term. Uh, so so don't, guess, don't confuse it with those. What it actually means is here, we also have a producer, and the producer wants to write uh, to multiple topics. In this example, I have two topics, topic A with one partition zero, and topic B with two partitions zero and one. Uh, I omit the broker here for simplicity. And what the producer can now do, the producer can, can write multiple messages to all those different topics. And those messages are marked as transactional. And that basically means that a consumer is not allowed to read those messages in a simplified form to express it. And then the producer has the ability to commit all those reads in an atomic manner. Um, that's also a simplified view. I cannot go into the details, uh, but I'm happy to answer any follow-up questions on that. That basically means if the, this transaction gets committed, now all the six records can be consumed downstream so if you have a consumer that is reading, the consumer now reads all six messages, or it would not read any messages in case the transaction gets aborted, what would also be possible. And as long as those, 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 those transactions is in flight, so it's neither committed nor aborted, the, the consumer will just stop consuming at this point uh, and block and wait until the transaction is, 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 uh, is resolved. Um, so for this transactional consumer producer, uh, there is a new API. Uh, I just want to sketch it out to give a feeling for this. So if you have a transactional producer, you would first initialize a transaction, call it init transaction. Um, that makes the producer transaction ready. And then you can start your, 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 your pattern where you say, I want a beginner transaction. And then you write one or multiple records uh, to your petitions and then you would commit your transaction. I will talk about the other API in a second, so send offsets to commit a uh, transaction. Uh, and then you would basically repeat, the pass, uh, repeat this pattern. You commit a After committing a transaction, you would begin a new transaction. You would again write, write, write. And in now in this case, if something goes wrong, for example, we, we catch a Kafka exception, uh, you would call a board transaction. That basically means all the, the writes I, I, I did uh, are never supposed to be show up uh, on any consumer. Uh, and then finally, there is a new exception type that could produce a fenced exception. Uh, that's a non-recoverable exception. In this case, you only can close the producer and need to create a new one. Uh, the producer is, is basically in a bad state. It's just like a, as a, as a high-level overview. So that is one part on how you can use it. But actually, there are simpler ways to use this. Um, so, so first, uh, Apache Kafka itself has a so-called streams API. Uh, and there, if you want to use exactly one semantics, it's just a configuration parameter called processing mode uh, that you set to exactly once. Uh, and then Kafka streams takes care of all those things internally for you. Um, if you want to use the item potent producer itself without multi-partition uh, writes, uh, then you would just say another configuration parameter, enable item potence. You set it to true, uh, and that's all. So it's also fairly easy to use because you don't have to change any of your code. Um, for the transactional producer, it's a little bit different. Uh, we saw already the transactional API. Um, you also need to set this config parameter. So it basically means if you want to use that, uh, you need to rewrite your code. 
Um, it's also harder to use, so the API seems a little bit easier than it actually is, because this transactional ID uh, is something you need to maintain in order to, to recover uh, your producer and, and, and handling this metadata, um, because this transactional ID um, must identify, or each producer gets their own transactional ID and identifies this producer over the lifetime. Even if the producer crashes and you recreate it, you have to use the same transactional ID here. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit tricky to, to, to track. And then for the transactional consumer, um, there's also just a configuration parameter, so it's also fairly simple to use. That's so called isolation level. You set it to read committed. Um, if you set it to read uncommitted, then it will just work as a regular consumer. It will return everything that is written. Uh, it will ignore if it's in a transactional context. It will ignore if something is aborted or committed. It just returns everything that sees. Um, then uh, what I omitted is this kind of send offset to transaction uh, API. And that's important for the last piece, the stream processing, where you have uh, Kafka as an input and Kafka as an output, and you want to do processing in between. Um, in Kafka, the, the one problem is that you, for this pattern, that you have your consumer, and consumer keep track of their offset, what they have read. And those offsets are committed to Kafka in a, in a regular interval. And in order to make exactly one read process write pattern, um, you cannot decouple this. So basically, if you have the consumer and the producer in the same applications, they don't know from each other. So for this reason, we have this new API, send offsets to transaction, that basically means the producer is used to commit the offsets of the consumer in the same application within the same transaction. That basically means if you commit your transactions, you commit your offsets, and you commit your writes in an atomic manner. And if you abort, then you basically fall back to the latest committed offsets, and you also undo all your writes. And that allows uh, to do exactly once stream processing. And of course, it's something Spark can also offer. If it imp implements this API, um, since Spark is now also able to have exactly once on top of Apache Kafka, um, that was not possible uh, before. So when will this be available? So it's, it's uh, available in the upcoming release, O11. Uh, the re release target date is mid-June, so maybe next week or in two weeks. So I can just encourage you to, to try it out and give feedback. Uh, and with that, I would like to, to sum up. So um, I've talked about the existing delivery semantics of Apache Kafka. Uh, and we, we, we have talked about why they are not ideal and what we can improve. Uh, I've also explained what we actually mean by exactly once in this context. Uh, and I also explained that it's the easiest way to use high-level APIs, especially for those transactions, uh, like the, the Streams API or Apache Kafka, because uh, handling the API is, is a, little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, so thank you uh, for your attention. And uh, if you want to, want to learn more about this, um, please visit at our booth downstairs. Uh, I can also take a couple of questions if you have time. Uh, and also, we have upcoming Kafka Summit in August. Um, there's a discount code. You can also pick up the discount code at the booth. Uh, and thank you for your attention. OK, thank you, Matthias. Did anyone have any questions quickly while we still have him up here uh, at the podium? Otherwise, you can find him at his booth after this. I'll, I'll run back to you so we can get it on the on the recording. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. So it's interesting for the advanced producer. So it looks like the broker need to maintain an in-memory buffer for the latest uh, metadata. So that will do memory, and uh, it depends on uh, the size of the data it can buffer. Could you provide? A little more details about that? Yeah, um, you, you mean the, the sequence numbers that is written in with, with the message. Yeah, so for, for this change, Kafka changes the internal message format uh, in order to, to, because this metadata is basically attached to every record. Uh, uh, so, so the point about it, the message format was really reworked completely, and that basically means 
because of the internal restructuring, uh, actually if you, if you have small messages, a lot of small messages, then you actually gain something because altogether it's smaller. Uh, if you have larger messages, then it amortizes and then you, you might add some overhead. But if you have large messages anyway, this overhead is also small compared to the message size. Um, so overall, uh, it's not really something where, where you lose because of this, this re rework of the message format. Um, but I can explain the details uh, uh, then offline, I guess. All right, were there any additional questions? All right, one more, and then I think we are gonna have to move on to the next talk. Hi, if I'm using um, like regular Spark streaming, not structured streaming, do I have to set up uh, the settings you showed explicitly for exactly one semantics from Kafka? Yeah, so the settings I showed for the consumer and the producer, uh, I mean, there's one setting for, 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 for Streams APIs that is something you're not using. And for consumer and producer, uh, if, if Spark would basically implement it, and I'm pretty sure they will do in a future release, uh, since they will do the settings for you. So I would expect that Spark has a similar configuration parameter or even enable it by default, like uh, Kafka Streams API has, where you just set this flag and then Spark streaming takes care of all this for you. That is what I would expect. Okay, that concludes the talk. Thank you, Matthias. Everyone, please Thank give you. a round of applause for Matthias here. Thank you.